Good morning, viewers. My name is Mofat Kago, and uh, thank you for watching. Welcome, Mofat. Mm. Thank you. Uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, I'm so much excited, and in, I invite all of you to this uh, precious uh, and very exciting uh, 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 part of our life that is marriage. And I hope that you will enjoy. My name is uh, Wycliffe Madani. I'm a pastor, also a counselor. Okay. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. I hope that you enjoy the show. <laughs> Thank you. We have talked about divorce and separation previously. At that time, we were talking from a lady's point of view, but she also gave us a very general view. And uh, today, looking at our society, Mufat, as a counselor, what you do precisely say is divorce and separation? Um, divorce and uh, separation are a bit, uh, uh, are terms that are used um, maybe interchangeably, but they have different meanings. Mm -hmm. Because separation is when a couple, a married couple, because of some issues that maybe they are not able to resolve, decide to give themselves a break, maybe so that they can think over the issues and uh, uh, probably even heal their emotional wounds. And after they are done with the break, they can come back together. Mm -hmm. But when we are talking about divorce, um, this means that a couple has gone ahead um, to even officially and legally, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, move apart and decide to live separate lives and set each, other's, each other free to either remarry. Okay. And uh, for some issues that they feel they cannot resolve or some issues they feel like, um, you know, they cannot overcome. Mm -hmm. So they decide to, uh, to go separate ways. So that is what we call divorce. Okay. So when, when I listen to you, I'm getting like sometimes separation could lead to divorce because when you are living apart for some time then you would either choose to resolve and come back mm -hmm. or they will be unresolved and you end up in divorce that's true yes that's very much true because um you know god's idea was not for married couples to stay apart okay but there are some people who feel and especially when the marriage has become toxic mm -hmm and uh, there is violence mm -hmm. in, within that marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, and we also know that God says he hates divorce yes. in Malachi 2. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he doesn't stop there. He goes further and he says, mm -hmm. but I equally hate a man who clothes himself with violence as a garment. Mm -hmm. And therefore, sometimes, even as a counselor, there are, there are situations whereby mm -hmm. we can, uh, we can uh, uh, suggest to couples to stay apart, mm -hmm. and especially when we realize that uh, their lives are, at, are in danger. We have had people who have been told to vumilia, vumilia, vumilia to the next thing we see is the news headlines, <laughs> mm -hmm. that somebody has uh, uh, been killed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, the, 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 the issue that we had exactly. just the other day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yes, separation can lead to, to, to divorce. Mm -hmm. Because if they, se they go separate ways and they feel that for some reasons they don't want to come together, although that I don't want to make it look so casual, mm -hmm. uh, because there's a very serious issue that we are talking about. Yeah. But depending on the issues that they are going through in their marriage, mm -hmm. they can decide to go separate ways. And at the end of that break, there are some who will come back together, mm -hmm. and there are others who will go ahead and divorce. But... Even having said that, we have even seen couples who have divorced officially and later they come back together and, and they stay together again. <laughs> that is why <laughs> when you go, papers. yeah, even when you go to the court uh, to sign those papers sometimes or to file a divorce, they will tell you, they will give you some time to go and think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once you are done with that, you can come back and uh, probably you will have thought uh, not, and ask yourself questions mm -hmm. whether that is the direction you want to go. Mm -hmm. So we have seen couples who have separated and have gone ahead to divorce, mm -hmm. but at the same time we have seen others mm -hmm. who have divorced and have come together again. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a complicated affair. I want 
to bring in pastor to our conversation because i had you mention scriptures where god has spoken about divorce uh previously we had seen that marriage was initiated by god as in god was the beginning of marriage and also when i look at all people who get married they are doing so through a ceremony so it's such a lovely and a joyous thing mm. and some people also have chosen to do a come we stay you know i will see you you'll see me at these times at these times but we shall not mm -hmm. tie the knots mm -hmm. you know and those are also there and those are also allowed by their own rules mm -hmm. but these people who have decided to walk down the aisle or which other style to come together and tie the knot what is it that happens that they did not know would happen that eventually and ultimately decide we cannot do this anymore mm -hmm. yes uh, first of all i want to to say mm -hmm. <laughs> that whether somebody did a, a, a wedding in a church mm -hmm. or in whichever uh, ceremony. The way they came together. Mm -hmm. Even that uh, thing we call come we stay. Yes. That is marriage because these are two people who are consummating. In the eyes of God, these are guys who are married. Like, are, you why even... say, are you able to find divorce <laughs> papers if you're doing a come we stay? You know, mm -hmm. um, if you're doing a come we stay, uh, the, 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 the unfortunate bit is that when it comes to uh, going separate ways, you just go unceremoniously yes. without anybody yes. knowing. Yes, mm. and it doesn't hurt much. Yes, but mm -hmm. uh, if we talk f from, a, from a godly and uh, biblical perspective, mm -hmm. those are people who are also married. <laughs> yes. Okay? Even yes, that yes. comes with mm. And the government has recognized that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, After five, six years, mm, yes, they call into marriage. They, you know, the, 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 the government, the law of the land, mm -hmm. also considers such people as married people. Mm. But coming back to your question, mm. uh, marriage is a mystery. Okay. It is a mystery because um, two people come together who don't know each other, and they are expected to walk this journey. <laughs> And it's a mystery because it's a journey of discovering each other. Mm -hmm. Every day, right from the time you tie the knot. And they're supposed to hang mm -hmm. on. The time that you'll be dying mm -hmm. in good old age. Mm -hmm. It is a journey of discovering each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that people don't know is that uh, marriage is not a bed of roses because even roses have thorns. thorns. People know. People know that method. Yes. People know. They are told. You are a counselor. Don't you tell people that? You know, we tell them. Yes. But at the same time, mm -hmm. because of the way uh, they have mm -hmm. been overtaken by love and emotions and mm -hmm. passion, mm -hmm. they are not able to see this. But the moment you settle down in marriage, mm -hmm. you can no longer hide from your partner. Marriage is an institution that is perfect. It doesn't have problems. But marriage mm -hmm. exposes two people who have problems. Okay. I want to give our <laughs> counselor a chance mm. to tell us his view on the same. Mm. Because God initiated marriage. Yeah. You are the ones who organize the ceremonies and join people together. Yes, yes. What is it that you don't tell these people that after <laughs> some time, some people even in less than a year, they are like, no, no, no. Uh, no we can't do this anymore. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh... Okay, uh, when we think about divorce, uh, divorce is uh, rising, especially not only in Kenya, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. But now, uh, there is a reason why, you know, if we, we think about why divorce, why divorce, yeah? Mm -hmm. These people should stay together. You see, when you think about maybe the greatest wisdom, that is the wisdom of God, uh, that is the Bible. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, there is nothing like divorce mm -hmm. in the Bible. Although sometimes people say Jesus Christ said, because of this and this, we have to do what? <laughs> to divorce. But in the Bible, originally, when God created Adam and Eve, he told them, you have to be together. You became one, yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you separate one? You can. It's impossible, yeah? Mm -hmm. But two you can separate. <laughs> two you can separate. Mm -hmm. So really, if we go back to the reason why people are separating or divorcing, uh, people, they don't believe in the word. Although they say, we believe in God. But now when it comes to believing the word of God, people say no. Mm -hmm. 
So outwardly, we have many Christians. We have many people who say we believe in God. But the people who surely believe in God, they are very few. If people could believe in this word of God, then divorce could be like zero. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Because they would have been made one, and one you cannot separate. Yes. That's, that's an interesting point. Viewer, we are live on G at GBS Kenya on Facebook. We want to take a short break, and you want you to be part of us. Our SMS line is 21144. Our Facebook is GBS Kenya. Be part of this conversation. We're talking about divorce and separation. God made them one. Can we really separate one? We'll be back shortly. How many of you use your real names on Facebook? When Gina is pretty pretty. <laughs> you must succeed in being a an ego and not a chicken. I'm seeing myself owning the biggest media house in Africa. Yes. I could employ you in fact. Yes. <laughs> Alright, now it is going to another direction. But yeah. <laughs> when you are born and when you grow up, now you do the work. You become a person who likes the country. You understand, right? I mean not getting a job at Kenya Power, right? <laughs> and you know what? Who you are online is exactly who you are offline. And who you are offline is who you are online. So I've been to many places to give lectures. Whenever I say, They respond with their eyebrows. Restoration. Amazing stories of real people like you who have triumphed over tragedy. Watch Turning Point International and be inspired to reach your turning point. It really ministers to the soul of man and as a pastor you benefit a lot because people learn and they learn how to cope with issues probably you don't even deal with in your summons. It's not reality TV, it's real life TV. <laughs> Hi, my name is Zawadi. At Mahanaim, I studied to qualify for the IGCSC through the Cambridge International Educational Program. We Mahanaim International High School students enjoy extracurricular activities such as BS TV club, taekwondo, cultural dance, orchestra, swimming, foreign languages, community service, and much more. I believe this unique experience I gain here will go a long way into strengthening the future me. The teachers and other ministers at Mahanai spread the no pain and running with us until the end of the mile, until we secured all of our goals. And that's how I passed my IGCSE exam. Mahanaim International High School cares about my future. Beyond our education, Mahanaim nurtures us to have bright and healthy mind so that we could become great future leaders. Restoration. Amazing stories of real people like you who have triumphed over tragedy. Watch Turning Point International and be inspired to reach your turning point. It really ministers to the soul of man and as a pastor you benefit a lot because people learn and they learn how to cope with issues probably you don't even deal with in your summons. It's not reality TV, it's real life TV. <laughs> Welcome to Women's View. What you see is what you get. Very exciting and fun. We grew up in a certain community. We were told this is how we 
women are. <laughs> Everybody was coming with what they can get. <laughs> this is not a joke. You signed up for life. Very interesting. A woman is this. You want somebody else to do something for you that you can do for yourself. You know what you're doing, a great job. You keep doing it. You are going to, to become a musician. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> okay, hit. Ah. The show airs every weekday from 11 a.m. to noon and is repeated every evening from 7 to 8 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there. There is a that makes paying for almost everything easy like AECs. No need to make trips to the ATMs to withdraw money or carry cash around. That's the Equity Bank Visa Card. Accepted everywhere you see the Visa sign. Use it to pay for food and drinks, fuel, shopping, pay for your Uber ride, shop online, travel and hotel bookings and so much more. Pay conveniently and free of charge. Card security is guaranteed thanks to the chip and pin technology that protects your card from fraud. Start paying with your Equity Bank Visa card now and enjoy the convenience of not carrying cash. How many of you use your real names on Facebook? When Guinean is sweetie pretty. <laughs> you must uh, succeed uh, in being uh, an ego and not a chicken. Myself owning the biggest media house in Africa. Yes. I could employ you in fact. Yes. <laughs> Alright, now it is going to another direction. But uh, that's a question. When you are born and when you grow up, now you do the work. You become a person who likes the country. You understand, right? I mean, not getting a job at Kenya Power, right? <laughs> and you know what? Who you are online is exactly who you are offline. And who you are offline is who you are online. So I've been to many places to give lectures. Whenever I say, Una sasa. They respond with their eyebrows. Everywhere, GBS. There is a card that makes paying for almost everything easy like ABCs. To make trips to the ATMs to withdraw money or carry cash around. That's the Equity Bank Visa Card. Accepted everywhere you see the Visa sign. Use it to pay for food and drinks, fuel, shopping. Pay for your Uber ride, shop online, travel and hotel bookings and so much more. Pay conveniently and free of charge is guaranteed thanks to the chip and pin technology that protects your card from fraud. Start paying with your Equity Bank Visa card now and enjoy the convenience of not carrying cash. Everywhere, GBS. Welcome back, viewer. Our SMS line is 21144. As I said, you're talking about divorce and separation, part two. Before we went to break, Mufat, we were asking uh, what precisely is causing 
people to divorce and now to get to the point where and we're getting an answer from our pastor that part of the reasons is because they do not know that once they were two and now God they made them one and one cannot be separated. What do you think are the reasons why people are divorcing? Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a very interesting analogy as mm. the Bible puts it. <laughs> but uh, s sometimes we forget mm -hmm. that marriage is about two people who have agreed to, to, sh to share their values, mm -hmm. to share their feelings, to share their dreams, mm -hmm. to share their worries, mm -hmm. to share their anxieties okay. together. Mm -hmm. They bring it on the table. Mm -hmm. From my uh, professional point of view, yes. uh, uh, somebody might uh, feel as if it differs with what the Bible says, but we normally say that one plus one or I plus I is equal to we. Not I, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Because marriage is a mystery again. Because uh, within marriage, people have boundaries mm -hmm. and they need to be respected. Mm -hmm. That is why mm -hmm. somebody likes um, this; the other one likes something else. When you talk about love language, that's why when you you realize that even though we are one, we are different. In other words, we are individuated, we are separate. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying yes, it's a mystery. We are different. We're it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. It's a mystery because we are one, yet separate. Yes. And the moment people do not realize that, they begin to force the other person be like them. Okay. okay? So we have our own personalities and we have boundaries. And we have boundaries. We should then, never be broken into. Which which should never be broken into because mm -hmm. once like for example mm -hmm. i have seen so that people, means we can never be one because no. if you have a wall around you uh -huh. and i have a wall around myself mm -hmm. then how are we ever going to meet you know i want you to listen to this mm -hmm. and understand this analogy of marriage being a mystery okay because it's a mystery it's yes with with god's own wisdom mm -hmm. he created it that way mm -hmm. People have got likes and dislikes True. still in the same marriage. Mm -hmm. But now, marriage in marriage institution, we are called to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to be vulnerable to your partner. Yes. In other words, mm -hmm. you are allowing him to know your worries, yes. to know your fears. That means breaking know, the boundaries. Uh, uh, listen to this. Mm -hmm. To know your anxieties. Mm -hmm. No, you ha they have not broken boundaries. Uh -huh. You have allowed them to know you but you have not allowed them to make you become like them of course not of course you're not making somebody to become like you yes because what i'm getting if i'm listening to you carefully is that i came with my staff you know in terms of personality and character and likes and dislikes and the other person did the same as well mm. but now we are supposed to coexist and become one yes you know mm. not one in the sense of I let the entire me go and be you. That's, that's the thing. You know? Yes. But as you are you mm -hmm. and as I am myself, then we get a meeting point. Mm -hmm. Then this means I have to break the walls mm -hmm. and you have to break the walls mm -hmm. and we find how to share this. That's the thing. And, and this is the reason why when we're not able to agree and do this, mm -hmm. then we cannot live together. Yes. But now my thought also is that we may not know how to do this. So people end up in marriage, mm, pastor. Mm, mm, they have their walls, mm, you know, each person have their walls, and nobody wants interference. Mm -hmm. Then they begin to fight. I don't know if that is mm. true. Uh, yeah. let, let me respond to that very yeah. fast. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, those walls are there. And a marriage, mm -hmm. you know, I can talk about marriage as a mystery in so many aspects. Okay. Because it's a process. It is. By the way, mm -hmm. becoming on one is not instant. Mm -hmm. becoming one is a process mm -hmm. and you've got because we come with those walls and as we continue to trust our partners as we continue to know who they are mm -hmm. as they continue to remove the masks yes we we begin to bond and and, and come and, closer and come closer yes and it is it is a journey 
Because who removes the masks? Who <laughs> removes the masks? Because when you know, I have come in with the things that I know, mm, is it easy for me to just put them down? You remove okay. the mask because you have got trust. Before I get the trust, it you is, said it's a process. <laughs> it is a process. Yes, Pastor, do I, I really, just get married and trust this? When um, my, my thought may like differ, mm -hmm. because if these people come together and they continue to discover each other yes. until they reach the point of agreeing, mm -hmm. then it means even they are not yet together. Do you get the point? Again. Because as long as I continue to discover you, mm -hmm. if I get something which is negative, which cannot work, mm -hmm. then divorce will come in. But my point of view is this. Mm -hmm. These people, when they come together, they should know that eh, the other, each and every one of them has his own you know, uh, behavior, eh, yes. character, and all those. Mm -hmm. So they should accept everything from the beginning. Is it easy <laughs> to accept everything? You, know, you see, let me tell you, you know, if there is something like in the Bible, there is covenant. Do you get it? Yes. When God makes with us a covenant, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. he knows us. He understands us. Mm -hmm. He knows our character. Mm -hmm. Then he makes with us a covenant He say, and your sins and iniquity I will remember no more. Mm -hmm. Which means this is a bond which can never be broken. But is he talking about covenant? It, brings, it means that I bring myself to the table and you bring yourself to the table, I go through the contract, this covenant then you sign, is, it becomes a covenant. Is what you are now but in, in, in courtship, where people are supposed to do this, people are bringing the wrong things. Is it? You know, now in marriage, bringing the wrong things. marriage is the covenant now. Marriage is a covenant. Not, so do we rush not that signing process, the covenant? Not that process of these people knowing each other later on, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that cannot be included in the covenant, in the marriage. Okay. You know, there's yes. some, there's, I, 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 I am feeling like uh, there is somewhere the pastor did not get us right. Mm -hmm. Because um, becoming and agreeing to settle is not an event. And it can never be an event. And these things people call courting and uh, dating, you can never know a person. A person, even the Bible says that <laughs> the heart of man is uh, desperately wicked. Yes. Who can know it? That's why I said they bring the wrong things to the table. You know, let me tell you, <laughs> marriage, mm -hmm. agreeing to settle is not an event. And mm -hmm. a, 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 it takes you time. Embracing this person. Mm -hmm. Um, even though once we get married, we say that mm -hmm. we are committed yes. to living with them. Mm -hmm. But that, saying that is one thing, mm -hmm. but discovering that person is a different ballgame. So, Mufat, my yeah. understanding is mm -hmm. that people get it wrong. When they get married, their issue is they think they have gotten it all. Yes. They have achieved. They have achieved. But yet it is the beginning it's of a the journey. process. It's a journey. So because, when these things, yeah. the expectations, the things they are really wanting from this person, mm -hmm. when they do not see them, then they lead them to divorce. I want you to, uh, to flow with the idea that I put on the table when we began. Mm -hmm. It's that, a mystery. Uh, that it, it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. And number two, mm -hmm. we say that marriage is perfect. Marriage in, its, in the way God created it. That institution, it's perfect. It, it's perfect. Meaning, it should never break. It, uh, it should not fail. You know, I. Uh, <laughs> you know, Meaning, it should not fail. You, you, you. Uh, let's let's go step by step. Yeah. <laughs> so no, I want can, to get you. So I don't want you to can lose get you. Get what I'm saying. I don't want to lose marriage. You. I yeah. said marriage is perfect. Yes. That institution, the way God created it. Yes. yes. It doesn't Me? have problems. But yes. I said, exactly. It doesn't <laughs> have problems. <laughs> it cannot fail. Listen to this. You know, don't put what's in. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen to this. Mm -hmm. It's perfect, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it reveals two imperfect people. Uh -huh. And that is the thought I did not want you to lose. Uh -huh. Marriage in itself, the way God created that institution, it's mm -hmm. perfect, but it reveals two imperfect people. When people come, mm -hmm. they are the ones who have problems. The imperfect but marriage, people mm. do not make the marriage imperfect. They yes. cannot make the marriage. So marriage perfect. is still so perfect. Those yes. two ideas are you know, different. Marriage yes. is still perfect. Yes. The people who come into it mm -hmm. are imperfect. Yes. What are, what is the perfect marriage supposed to do to them? You know, the perfect make marriage them perfect? actually no. uh, the perfect marriage yes. should reveal 
who these people are. They are already imperfect. That they are, is they are, not. They are imper you know. And, and marriage is revealing that their imperfection. Marriage is revealing their imperfection. Uh -huh. Number two thing that mm -hmm. they need to do yes. is to understand mm -hmm. that the whole essence of marriage mm -hmm. is for couples to make each other better versions of themselves. Okay. Better versions. Once their the imperfections, of once yes. Im their imperfections is revealed mm -hmm. by, ma by marriage, mm -hmm. they embark on a journey of okay. making each other mm -hmm. become a better version of who they were. Yes. So if you're not becoming better mm -hmm. in your marriage, mm -hmm. something is amiss. Okay. You discover, mm -hmm. you get into it, and marriage mm -hmm. uh, helps you to discover. You know, the perfect marriage helps you to discover that, you know what, you guys are just so imperfect. Yes. So who walks you through this journey mm -hmm. to make you the better mm -hmm. people that you need to be in this perfect marriage? You know why because I, this is exactly where the problem is. When there's that no one to make you the better people, then it collapses. It fails. Uh, God in his own wisdom knew that the reason why a man and a woman mm -hmm. gets attracted to each other mm -hmm. is because of something good mm -hmm. I see in you. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, what attracts a man to a woman or yeah. a woman to man mm -hmm. is seeing what something see. in them yes. that they like mm -hmm. and if you dig deeper you will realize that that which attracts you to that man you don't have yes okay uh -huh. and therefore mm -hmm. once you settle down in that marriage mm -hmm. the duty of that man mm -hmm. and the duty of that woman mm -hmm. because there is something that you have and your man doesn't have mm -hmm. and there is something that the man has and you don't have your duty you are the ones who should take through each other to become let's say for example somebody That's what you're saying is very interesting what i, I know. doubt what i doubt is <laughs> whether a man is in that position to execute what you are presenting because people are so generous mm. to themselves they want to always to be the ones who are right no one is willing to put down their hearts or themselves huh, to say by the way in this i do not know teach me you're stronger in this, I would like to be like this. Everybody wants to exalt just what they know and what they have. And this is the, because if the things you're saying, which are very good and interesting, if they were practicable, if they were doable by every couple, mm. today we'll not be sitting here talking about divorce and separation. That's the thing. Exactly. <laughs> so, Pastor, this perfect marriage, mm. according to God, mm. And even Moffat has confirmed that yes. marriage is perfect. Yes. These imperfect people, what is it to make to actually present Actually, that I want to say they are not imperfect to me. Again. There is no way they can be perfect and they be imperfect again. The marriage is what is perfect. The marriage is the one that is perfect. The people are the imperfect. People the people are also who make perfect. Up that marriage. The people are also perfect. Yes. Okay. Let Let's me hear. say, yes. Yes. you know, through the word of God, mm -hmm. when Adam saw his wife, did he see any mistake in the wife? No, he was just excited. Actually, not know. excited. He saw, <laughs> he saw everything is perfect. Uh -huh. when, you read, the when, you read, when you read songs of songs, mm -hmm. when Solomon saw the Shunammite woman, mm -hmm. he said there is, there is no blemish in her. So our eyes have changed. <laughs> okay. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. Our eyes, which we could see, which God gave to us mm -hmm. to see our partners as mm -hmm. they have already changed when man fell into sin, okay. when man cannot believe in the word of God. So from that point of view, you find people are looking at each other as imperfect. But in reality, if you look at them with the eyes of God, they are perfect. Okay. So marriage is bringing together two people who are perfect. So why do they fail if the marriage is also perfect? Why does the marriage fail? Yeah, because, you know, new idea came in. <laughs> Satan why, why already does, why gave, does the marriage now, fail? now the failure comes because now people, they are not really looking at one another through the word of God. People left the word of God, they embraced their thoughts. So when they embrace their thoughts, they are judging one another. They are fighting one another. And finally, divorce comes in. And isn't that imperfection, Pastor? But that is not the heart of God. Do you get it? No. They received another heart from Satan, which, of course, is making them now to look at each other imperfect. So they start no, looking for mistakes for me, from when, each other. Even if I'm naked before my wife, is there any problem? 
Of course, there's no problem. There is no problem. And that is physical. <laughs> that is physical. I'm just I giving an example. Yes. I think people <laughs> went beyond. Moffat, you were talking about there's something that attracts you, you know, that attracts the man to the woman. Mm. Is this thing really just the physical or there is more to it? Because when you start living together mm. with that person that your eyes saw, slowly by slowly, you discover another person that your eyes never saw. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this was the real person. And with time, you want to lay down, you lay aside this person. And by this, your hearts are growing distance and apart and apart and apart. Before you know it, you're so much separated, though you live in the same house. People are victimizing drunkenness and, and, and adultery and stuff like this. But I want you, gentlemen, to be able to enclose the underlying factors that are prompting this because these are the major reasons of divorce not every person who is divorced today and separated from their spouse was a drunkard not all of them committed adultery you know mm -hmm. some of them it was as simple as we have not been having a conversation you know we have not we've not been able to have intimacy as a couple you know for a month for two months, for three months. And this thing is just graduating. And it's not because someone is adulterous. It's not because someone is a drunkard. What precisely is bringing up these underlying factors that we cannot see? Because we are only victimizing. He drinks too much and comes back at home at three. You know? Yeah. You, you He's know. hanging on with women. What, what do you, uh, the, quest, the answer to the question that you are asking, mm. Is, has already been answered by what we have <laughs> discussed. Mm -hmm. Because when you see drunkenness, or when you see somebody uh, you know, cheating on his or her spouse, those are just symptoms. And that is why I feel a bit sad when the pastor says that people are perfect. As a matter of fact, <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you refuse to embrace the fact that you, yeah, that you are in the process of perfection, even mm -hmm. Paul says, mm -hmm. We are in the process of, we are not yet perfected. Mm -hmm. We are in the process of being perfected. Mm -hmm. Once you do not embrace the fact that your wife or your husband is not perfect, mm -hmm. number two, is mm -hmm. not like you. Mm -hmm. You are two different people. Like, mm -hmm. for example, something mm -hmm. that is very easy. Mm -hmm. Somebody, and you know, uh, the way we are has so much been informed by our environment, the society around us, and our families of origin. Mm -hmm you know, the ingredients that makes up a person. Yes. Of Much course. of the baggages that we bring into our marriages is what we saw yes. in our families of origin. Exactly. That is where we learned how a, a man and a woman ought to be treated by the way we saw our parents treating each other. Mm -hmm. We carry that subconsciously. Yes. However, mm -hmm. you realize that there are some people who have come from families and uh, these families, let's say, for example, you grew up in a family that uh, struggled with anger. Mm -hmm. and resentment. Yeah. You don't know how to, uh, control. to control yourself. You are never taught on how to have some positive ways of conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And therefore, once you come in to your marriage, that's the only thing you that's know, the only thing you know mm -hmm. because that is what was put in your deposit. Yes. Your spouse, again, is also carrying his or her own baggage into the same marriage. Mm -hmm. And you realize there begins to be conflict. Mm -hmm. And that is why mm -hmm. people begin to fight each other because yes. they want to change uh -huh. each other, mm -hmm. which is not possible. And they don't make it, so they choose to separate. They don't make it. They begin to do what we call stonewalling, or, uh, or uh, uh, they get gridlocked. Mm -hmm. You know, you fight, you fight, you cannot go anywhere. Yes. You are not changing a person. Mm -hmm. But if only they were able to sit down, mm -hmm and use the I statements. Every time I'm counseling with couples, I always encourage them to avoid the you. You, mm -hmm. you did this, you, mm -hmm. you, you. Mm -hmm. And focus on I. So you're saying people basically do not know themselves well before they point fingers at the other person. You know another mystery, because they are coming as we, as we speak. Mm -hmm. Marriage is about discovering each other, but before you discover your spouse, you have to discover yourself. 
you have to first discover, discover yourself. yourself. Get to know where you are coming from. Mm -hmm. What are some things that are limiting you? Mm -hmm. What are your deficiencies? Mm -hmm. Because many times we focus on the other person. And even in our social relationships, mm -hmm. we don't want to admit the fact that we are wrong. We want to justify ourselves. We yes, want, we are we generous want to ourselves, like I said. Very generous to ourselves. Yes, but now if we are doing these things more fat, if this is the if these are the truths and the facts that we are taught by the clergy and by the therapist, the family therapist, why are we still ending up in divorce? You know, uh, because these things are so difficult to execute. Actually, what I want to say is this. Mm -hmm. You know, in school we used to be taught like a formula. If you want to get the answer for a, a certain sum, you have to get the formula. If you don't follow that formula, <laughs> you cannot get the answer. Okay. So, we are thinking about weaknesses which, of course, two pa partners are having. Mm -hmm. But now, those weaknesses may be there. Yes. But now, if this one clear mind, we have come together, and there is nothing like us separ you know, separating or divorcing, mm -hmm. then these two people can resolve those issues and overcome. Mm -hmm. They can be ready for every challenge they meet in their life. Mm -hmm. in their life. Mm -hmm. But if these two people came together, but there is no clear heart in them that they have to be together, whatsoever happened, they have to be together. Yes, so they then must even make it a clear, small, not yeah, A small issue, make them to divorce. So, they have so to the problem is mind. the foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the foundation. Not the challenges they are meeting in their life when they have come together. Mm -hmm. People give is, reasons, as yes. you have said, mm -hmm. maybe like drinking, you know, fighting. All these things, you know, if they have a clear foundation inside them, mm -hmm. they can overcome all of them. But our problem is that from the beginning, they never had the mind to stay together. No, they yes. do. They no, do. They, they just because come together. So much to come together. <laughs> they just come together. They invest a lot, Pastor, to come together. <laughs> actually, so they actually have the mind, they have the heart, they have the willingness and everything else. But somehow, it just doesn't work. And my concern and deepest concern is, what is it they can never sit down and apply the principles you're teaching us today and just resolve and say, you know what? This is who you are, and this is who I am. I am able to go up to here, and you can come up to here, and we can meet and resolve and talk. You know, What is it that everyone has closed and built their walls thicker? I'm not coming out of here, and you're not coming out of here. Mm. Yeah. You know, you, know, you know, it is interesting. Three things happen when there's a crisis in marriage. Mm -hmm. Couples will either run towards each other. That is what we call crisis intimacy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a mystery <laughs> because there can be intimacy in crisis. Yes. And these, the only couple who can experience crisis intimacy mm -hmm. are the couples who have learned the art of running towards each other when there okay. is crisis. Mm -hmm. Number two, there are those couples who will run against each other. Mm -hmm. That is when they begin to fight. They begin to blame. You know, blame game will start. Yeah? If, you did, if you did not do this, this would not have happened. Yes. Blame game. Running, uh, running against. Then there is what we call running apart. And running apart is what uh, brings divorce. Mm -hmm. They feel like they cannot confront that situation. Mm -hmm. They feel helpless. Mm -hmm. They feel unwanted. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they run apart. They so that means they always need ways. someone to work with them. They need someone to work with them. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, in yes. marriage, mm -hmm. growth has to take place. And if you are not growing together, you must grow apart. There is no middle ground. How if, do you grow together? If you are, are not doing a family business together? You, no. Working in the same company? No, 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 no. Go no, to no. the same church? Oh, not at all. Uh -huh. That is, uh, you know, those are some of the mechanical things that people say. Yes, I've had people, masks. I have had people talk about even, uh, uh, you know, issues to do with the uh, consummating. Mm -hmm. And they teach some very funny mechanical <laughs> ways of trying to help couples stick together. Okay. Number one, mm -hmm. if they are able... Number one, to understand the various aspects of intimacy mm -hmm. in a person. Physical mm -hmm. intimacy, how mm -hmm. does it come? Mm -hmm. Intellectual intimacy, mm -hmm. are we together? Can we sit down and agree on something? Yes. 
crisis intimacy, mm -hmm. you know, all sort of things. Mm -hmm. They sit down and discuss. And they stop discussing, discussing events. They learn how to discuss selves. Mufat, there are people who can never sit, there are men who can never sit down with a woman and listen to them. That is why we are here to... So, you have heard, you <laughs> yes. listen to a woman saying, yeah. this man never listens to me. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. 20 years, 15 years, he never listens to me. Mm. So this woman has been living here, I don't know, as a servant or as a subordinate, I do not know. But you hear a woman desperately saying, my husband would not listen to me. Mm. My husband is so harsh. When can they have a conversation? You know, um, and who should work with these couples? Because mm. I like the point that you're saying that mm. they actually need to work together and sit together. If there is no one working with that couple, they cannot even know their defense mechanisms. You know, like when they have a crisis, they don't know whether they are drawing against each other mm. or drawing towards each other. They mm. don't know. It just happens, and they do not know that it's a way to curb them and keep them from ending up in separation. Mm. Who is supposed to work with this couple? Counselors and family therapists and pastors. Okay, so <laughs> that means, pastor, do people come to you after one year or two years of marriage? How are you supposed to do this? You mm -hmm. stay for 10 years or you wait until you have a crisis, then you take yourself to the counselor. Is well, it a journey? Of course, <laughs> of course, the reason why a person would step into his office or my office mm -hmm. is because they are having a crisis. So that's the only time we should go? Uh, no, no, not, no. That's not what I'm they saying. They have to okay. continue learning. But it is, you know, one other thing that causes people to really make a mess mm -hmm. is, is when we enclose ourselves. You don't move out. You don't mm -hmm. relate with people. The reason why God created coexistence mm -hmm. is so that I can learn from him, learn from me, mm -hmm. and we open our minds to learning. Moffat, that is... A very good point I wonder whether it is practical because when I meet with you couples outside there you have must a lot all that I'm seeing you're holding hands you're happy you're talking I don't see you quarreling I don't see you fighting you're always smiling <laughs> you're di dining together you know you're always going shopping together so what do I see everybody else is happy except me everyone else is doing well except me so I, I isolate myself Everyone seemed to be doing well except myself. Is that the reality or people are masking themselves? And, you know, I, I think it would not be fair for us to try to, um, to, 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 to say mm -hmm. people who are masking because we may not know. But yes. the point is, mm -hmm. in your church where you go, mm -hmm. in your social interactions, yes. Unless you are a subhuman, mm -hmm. if not a superhuman, mm -hmm. you must be able to know so and so can be my confidant. Yes. So and so, True. Uh, I can share with them my mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. But you realize mm -hmm. there are some people who tend to think, and this is another reason why people do not report their issues to, mm -hmm. to uh, or go out to seek help. Yes. Because they think they are the only ones who are going through that crisis. Ah. And therefore you feel like you cannot speak up. And some people fear that this thing will spread out. It will spread. Pastor, do people have confidence in the clergy? Yeah, there are many people who have confidence and there are people who do not. Who do not. <laughs> yes. Because but, listening to Moffat, yeah. I hear that one of the things that could also end up a couple to divorce and separation mm. is when they have enclosed the issues to themselves and they are not speaking it out. And one of the reasons they may not speak, speak it out mm, is right. because they fear, you mm. know, this thing will be exposed. So yeah, people everyone. are keeping to themselves. Do you think this is one of the reasons why people end up in divorce when they don't talk about it? No, when I think about divorce, I will go back to my major point. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you see the Bible, actually people want to change. Like, I want to change my wife. You know, when I wanted to change my wife, we used to fight a lot. Mm -hmm. But now, I, I did not believe my wife is okay. Is, uh, you know, my wife is right, yeah? Although I see many weaknesses and lacking, I could not embrace her as my wife, yeah? So when I wanted to change her, there was a lot of conflict and fighting. Okay. When she wants to change me, because she can see many weaknesses in me, also she yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is a heart which is formed. Not, it is not the heart of God. It is the heart which we are given from Satan, yeah? Mm -hmm. That kind of right heart. So as we live with this heart inside us, we start judging one another, fighting, you know, 
and going against one another. But now, if we go back to the original heart of God, we see the person whom God gave me, and I see the person whom God gave me, and then that becomes, a, you know, a, a, a condition to overcome all the challenges we meet in our life, mm -hmm. then there cannot be divorce. I think I like the point that uh, if I'm trying to change you, then we will fight. Because this is the point you are saying, that I need to understand we are not the same. We are different. I have my own stuff and you have your own stuff. So me coming into your camp and adjust it and change it, this is, this is the problem. Uh, we are actually, actually out I of should... time first. <laughs> <laughs> and we should be giving our party shots. Mm. And I want, uh, I would request Moffat to address this issue, especially of, you know, how we can overcome and continue staying together. Because if I realize that you're different and I'm different and I'm not willing to come into your camp, then we'll stay apart. Mm. Yes. Uh, my parting shot is that um, uh, life does not always give us what we want, mm. but it gives us what we fight for. People can choose to fight for their marriage, but at the same time, acknowledging and admitting that we are one, that marriage is a mystery in the sense that we are one, yet individuated, yet separate, yet with the boundaries. And number two, we need to lay ourselves vulnerable, allow ourselves to be vulnerable to each other. Because once you allow yourself to be vulnerable to each other, then they are able to understand your fears, you know, share your frustrations. Don't stop this issue of discover, discover, or rather discussing events and other things. You know, many, many couples in their levels of communication, they are at the stage that we call clergy. Clergy whereby you <laughs> ask each other, how was your day? Good. What do you want to eat? Ugali. And you don't go beyond that. Whereby people tend even to turn down connection beads because those are called connection beads. When I ask you, how was your day? Mm -hmm. Most likely I'm not actually interested in your day. I am interested in you. I am trying to initiate a discussion. But many times we turn that down. The people should learn to discuss uh, selves and also uh, try as much as they can to use the I statements. I am feeling this. I am feeling this. And for us men and uh, women together, we learn the art of picking a positive message out of a negative message. Because even when you come to me and you are angry over some issue, I should be able to listen and hear what is it that makes him angry? What is it that uh, I have done that has made her angry? Because both the couple, each one of them, has contributions or has, uh, they have contributed to the crisis that they are having. Good. Excellent. Uh, uh, my parting shot is this. Uh, actually, um, although we say we believe in the word of God, but in reality we don't believe. Because if we really believed in the word of God, there could be no divorce. That is the first thing. And then secondly, also, if we believe in the word of God, there is nothing like divorce. Once we enter into marriage, we can not have any kind of vocabulary in us that we are entering here. If things doesn't work well, then we are going to divorce. But we can enter into marriage having this mind, there is nothing like divorce. Then every challenge we meet, we can overcome with that heart, which of course, you know, is already founded in us. Then challenges cannot be a condition for us to divorce. I hope that, you know, we can believe in the word of God. We cannot just, you know, say, I believe in God, but I, I don't believe in the word of God. So for us to overcome divorce, we have to believe in the word of God. Thank you, gentlemen. This has really been awesome. I have had a good time listening to you both. And thank you also, viewer, for watching. I hope that you have learned a lot of stuff. This gentleman have actually nailed it. Divorce is not the answer. There are lots of things that can be done. Please talk to them. Find us also on YouTube. Give us feedback. We will talk to you more. I've been your host. My name is Betty Akuku. See you next time.